What's up guys, so FedEx just dropped this box off with me and inside of here I actually have an Option O P100 and I thought it would be fun to do an unboxing of this grinder just so you know what comes in the box. The first thing to do I think is just to open the box to see what's inside and get a feel for how this grinder works. Alright, so let's open this box. And inside of here, it looks like I opened it upside down. There's four nylon zip ties. Let's see if I can flip it over. And wow, okay, so this thing actually comes in a case. That's actually really impressive. So let's open up these zip ties. I can see why they provided those extra zip ties so you can close it back up if you're traveling. And now there's these clips, I guess, that are removed somehow. Keep the lid on. And underneath this lid, some packaging foam. It's good to see. So under this foam, there is some optional stickers, standard power cable. We have a little dosing cup. I've heard this referred to as the ketchup cup. Um, and this is actually nicer <laughs> looking at it now than a regular ketchup cup. They ship out a dosing funnel with magnets. Here's my decent portafilter. Wow, well, it fits pretty well on here. Looks like it works really well. They provided a little RDT bottle. Ah, uh, this is the WDT that they're sending out. These are looking like they're pretty thick wires. Well, I can measure them later. You know me guys, I have my own WDT. So I'm just gonna put this back in the box. Oh, they gave you a little package of dial indicators. And I think this is gonna be useful later on for when you're setting your zero point. And finally, this is a very heavy aluminum catch cup. This is the base section here. It's rubber footed. It's got some pins to hold everything in. So anything else in here? It looks like the remainder is just the grinder. Pull out this grinder. Wow, this is a very heavy grinder. Oh boy. The Option O P100. So here it is, this is the Option O P100. All right, that slipped in nicely. Whew. This is a heavy grinder. So let me just show you around here. Okay guys, so I just plugged in this grinder. Let's see what happens if I turn it on. <laughs> and can you see it actually shot some coffee out of me. So it seems like they've tested it at the factory, which is great. And so here I can change the RPM speed. You can hear it spin up and spin down. Pretty cool. And then if you push this button in the front here, I think there's some sort of auto purge detection feature there. So you have the ability to auto purge at a higher RPM or um, keep it constant, I believe. I'm not super sure. But what I'd really like to do actually is test the alignment. And why don't we, first of all, unplug this grinder. Why don't we pull off the top of this? Okay, wow, it's a little bit grease. And here's a grinder. Wow, this is a massive bearing here. <laughs> wow, <laughs> huge bearing. And then here's this 98 millimeter high uniformity burr. And so let me just brush out a little bit of this coffee. There's not too much retained in here at all, actually. And I just wanna brush out this coffee because I think if there's any coffee in the burrs, then it can affect the potential reading when we do a marker test. Let's start with the rotating burr. It's pretty obvious how well machined everything is in this grinder. Like the tolerances are just tiny. You know, I didn't mark which position this bird carrier came out of. So let me do that now. And then we'll just screw this back on. Let's put this back on here. So you have the outer carrier, which just fixes the top here. This bar here moves, just this dial itself moves. Then you can also move this top carrier down, and this also screws into place. So I'm going to loosen the top a little bit, plug this grinder back in, and then, yep, you can hear it touching right there. So I'm gonna move my zero right here, and then let's take it back apart and see how the alignment looks. So first time using this grinder, it's pretty interesting actually, you have a thread on the outside here, which keeps the top of this grinder fixed to the actual moving portions. And then inside here, you have another thread and um, the thread pitch internally is 0.75 millimeters, 
according to their specifications. And let's see this wipe. This wipe is pretty close to perfect. A little bit of an area. Um, right at about four or five o'clock where it's not fully wiped around the edges. I don't think I would mess with this. I think it's really nicely machined. So I'm just gonna clean up all the dry erase that I can from the moving burr and we'll do it again for this top burr. So you can see here that I've just marked this burr. I'm gonna put it back in how I pulled it out. And now move that burr gap apart a little bit and let's get it to touch. And we'll pull it apart again. Oh wow, I mean look at this. It's just perfect. But yeah, that's great. So let's put this back on. And you know what, I'm just gonna move this over to my workstation and why don't we pull a shot with it and see how it looks. All right, so I got everything set up over here. And I've actually been pulling shots of this coffee. This is a Colombian Gesha from Whiptail Coffee. And Whiptail is a local roaster to me. Uh, they roast out of Coro, a co-roasting facility in Berkeley. And I was actually really impressed with this coffee, but also this roaster. And so if you go to the website and you check out um, any of their coffees, they'll list the actual prices paid directly to the farmer and the price that they paid for the green coffee itself. So this coffee, because it's a Gesha, you know, they actually paid a substantial amount for this coffee. They paid $11.50 and $8 or $8.50, something like that went to the farmer, which is a good price for, for coffee farmers, you know, commodity coffee selling for about $3 a pound. And that makes me feel better drinking this coffee. And really the best thing that we as consumers can do to ensure that farmers are being compensated fairly for their work is to look for roasters and for coffee sellers that are telling you how much the farmers themselves are being paid. So this coffee I've actually been pulling turbo shots with, uh, with my DF and also with my Ode. My Ode is off camera here with these Casper's Beast 2. And I've been pulling this at about 65 micron burr gap. On this P100, that's gonna to equate to about eight, eight and a half. So that's what I'll set this grinder to now. So the first thing I'll do is actually purge this grinder with a handful of beans. So I got some beans here. And we can purge it. So that's a nice feature about this P100 is that it spins the RPM a little higher to kick out any remaining grinds you have. And then you can hit your little knocker. And actually a little bit of coffee did come out of here. Why don't I prepare a shot and we can see how it tastes. So Optional actually advertises that this grinder has a maximum re retention of 0.1 grams, and that's with or without RDT. So I'm gonna try it this time without RDT. I'm measuring a little under 0.604, and then I'll just tear this dosing cup so that we can see how much comes out. Okay, and I'm seeing 15.93. So it is actually about 0.1 grams retained somewhere in this grinder. And you know, that's, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna use this for the shot. Um, it's a little under, but I think it'll be okay. Standard wetting in the bottom filter. And then I'll toss it into this porta filter. Dab it dry. Straightforward stuff. You have your dosing cup. I imagine you could dose directly into the porta filter as well with that included dosing funnel. Just gonna WDT quickly. Give it a tap. And that's what it looks like after the tap. And I'm gonna use this cactus. It's looking pretty good. And then we'll just pop a flare screen on top. Okay, that shot was a lot faster than I expected. Barely hit four bar pressure. And I was grinding pretty fine, so that's interesting. Let's get set up here and we'll do a little tasting. So why don't we give this a taste now that it's cooled down a little bit. Cheers. Yeah, you know, it actually tastes really clean. Um, 
this one tastes like it ran a little fast because it did run pretty fast. I didn't build up very much pressure in the shot. I think it hit maybe four bar and finished in 13, 12, 13 seconds. So it tastes like that. I would say a little peachy, uh, very floral. And that's just a characteristic of this coffee. And I think dialing this grinder in a little bit more, going a little bit finer, I'll be getting a little bit more creaminess out of it, a little less harshness and acidity. So stay tuned. I, I am going to be testing this grinder quite a bit, comparing it to the multi-purpose burrs and the DF64. And ultimately, I will be comparing it to the cast burrs. But right now, my interest is really in this P100. And I want to see you know, what, how well it's extracting compared to the DF64. And I want to see how uh, well it extracts after I season the burrs and see if there's any difference in terms of shot time or extraction from seasoning with, you know, 10 pounds of beans or so. So uh, keep an eye out for future videos and I just wanted to share with you my unboxing experience of this P100. And I gotta say that I'm pretty impressed, you know, looking at it, feeling it, it's so heavy. The machining on it is super nice. All the threads, everything about it just moves so smoothly. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with this grinder so far. So first impressions are great. And taste-wise, can't complain. Um, especially for a shot that ran the way it did. It was pretty good. All right, so thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.